John Arrowsmith, like Joseph Carl and Stephen Marshall, was a popular preacher among the Westminster divines. He preached frequently during the regular fast days that Parliament held. He was born 29th of March 1602 near Newcastle upon Tyne. In his youth he was hit in the eye by an arrow and as a result had a glass eye. He was educated at St John's College, Cambridge. In the year that he married, 1631, he became preacher at St Nicholas Church in an English seaport and market town about 100 miles north of London called King's Lynn, near Norfolk. Lynn is a very ancient English town mentioned in the 11th century Doomsday Book. It didn't get the name King until the time of Henry VIII. A small but prosperous town, it has had many famous men of God associated with it. John Huller, the Protestant martyr and banned preacher who was burned to death under Mary's reign, was first taken at Lynn after he was caught preaching there. Adam Thorogood, 1604 to 1640, a leading colonist in Virginia Colony, was born and raised in Lynn. The Puritan William Gurnall, 1616 to 1679, the author of the Christian in Complete Armour, was born here and probably sat under the ministry of Arrow Smith. Arrowsmith, distinguished for his gifts and learning, was one of two clergy called from the county of Norfolk to become a member of the Assembly of Divines. In January 1643, he first preached to the Parliament on its monthly fast day. This usually took place on the last Wednesday of each month. These were an all-day affair, with two preachers preaching, interspersed with seasons of prayer. Each sermon would take an hour to an hour and a half to complete. His text on that occasion in January 1643 was on Leviticus 26 verse 25 And I will bring a sword upon you that shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant. And when ye are gathered together within your cities, I will send the pestilence among you and ye shall be delivered into the hand of the enemy. He pointed out that they deserve civil war for their sins. And he called upon all present to repent and to begin to obey the Lord. In 1644, he became the master at St. John's College, Cambridge, and was much used of God there to the reviving of religion and godliness among the students. He was a very affecting preacher among the young men. The story is told of how he was used in the awakening and comfort of one Master John Machen, who himself became the instrument of the conversion of his three sisters and of both his parents. In the assembly, he was one of the translators of foreign correspondence into Latin. The Scottish minister, Robert Bailey, called him a learned divine and the one upon whom they put the task of answering the antinomians. Some have said he was particularly active in the framing of the Westminster Shorter Catechism. Arrowsmith was a Presbyterian among the divines. In 1645, he became a minister of a London church, St. Martin's Congregation on Ironmonger Lane. He became one of the what became known as the Triers, who examined the suitability of ministers for the pastorate. The historian James Reed says, his name ought to be in the list of the eminent divines and men of learning who were real ornaments to the Reformed Church in the 17th century. He was a distinguished writer and his works display a gift of the use of imagery and metaphor. They evidence the learning that he was renowned for. Cotton Mother said, everything of an arrowsmith is admirable. The Reverend John Cotton, the famous minister of the American colonies, admired him. In his correspondence he wrote, Commend me to Thomas Goodwin and Arrowsmith. Several sermons that he preached in Parliament have been printed. He commenced a systematic theology under 30 heads 
but only managed six before he died. The unfinished book was printed shortly after his death under the title, A Chain of Principles. And his exposition of John chapter 1 verses 1 through 18 were found among his papers and were published in 1660. His most famous work among Puritans was his Latin work on the spiritual soldier's warfare. Among the many sayings and quotations from Arrow Smith, we include some of the following. Certain it is that none can make our souls happy but God who made them, nor any give satisfaction to them but Christ who gave satisfaction for them. They were fashioned at first according to the image of God, and nothing short of him who is styled the brightness of the Father's glory and the express image of his person can replenish them. About election, he said, we were made within the world, but chosen before it. Election, having once pitched upon a man, it will find him out and call him home, wherever he be. It calls a case out of a cursed Jericho, Abraham out of idolatrous Ur of the Chaldees, Nicodemus and Paul from the college of the Pharisees, Christ's sworn enemies, Dionysius and Damaris, out of superstitious Athens. In whatsoever dunghills God's elect are hid, election will find them out and bring them home. If ever the world appear to you temptingly glorious, suspect it for one of Satan's discoveries. In a sermon preached before the Houses of Parliament, in March 1644, upon the text in 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 12, they called the name of it Ebenezer, saying, Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. And speaking about Elijah, and quoting from James 5, verse 17, he said, He prayed in his prayer. We translate it, He prayed earnestly as if that which is not earnest were no prayer. They in Jonah chapter 3 verse 8 are directed to cry mightily unto God. A whispering devotion is seldom answered with a loud echo from heaven. Ask, said Christ, and it shall be given. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Ask, seek, knock. There will be need of all three. Do you want a blessing? Ask it of God. Have you asked, yet still continue to want? Seek it out. Have you sought, yet cannot find? Knock, and the treasury where it lies shall be opened to you. He said these words also. One said, well, that the old wood is best to burn. Old friends best to trust. And old books best to read. A heathen philosopher once asked, where is God? The Christian answered, let me first ask you, where is he not? Arrowsmith was a burning and shining light, full of zeal and desirous to do more for God. But in his fifties he was seized with the lingering sickness and he died in February 1659, not yet 57 years old. 